Yeah, well, it's a bit um, <coughs> strange. They, uh, uh, one, one day they're talking about uh, having stricter gun control and uh, the next they're over there talking about getting uh, funding from NRA. So it's a bit hard to work out what position they have. Pauline was also talking about um, not accepting any donations from uh, foreign uh, organisations. Um, it's, it's not an uncommon thing in the US for a political party to accept a donation from the NRA. Is that something that you would consider here, accepting a donation from, a, from the NRA or an Australian gun lobby? Uh, we'd have to have a look at it, but um, you know, we, all parties need funding, so if somebody, uh, genuine people are funding us, then fine. We need, we need it uh, to do an advertising campaign. So you don't think what One Nation did was necessarily a bad thing or an evil oh, thing? Not really, I know. Um, I can't see any problem except for the fact that they said one thing and then they did another thing. So, uh, you know, that, that's a bit of a strange uh, situation. Um, do you think uh, Australia's gun laws should be working? Absolutely. They, um, every nation that's disarmed its population eventually oppressed them. So, um, I don't know if you remember, but in 2012, uh, the Venezuelans were disarmed. By 2016, they were um, eating cats and dogs because they're starving. And in 2019, they're being shot by their own government because they tried to access the food that Donald Trump sent down there. Was there, there talk when you were in One Nation about going to a US gun lobby looking for donations? No. So what do you think inspired this? Who knows? They need money, I guess. They want more money. Do you think it's been led by Paul and Hanson or these two other men? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to comment. I don't know whose whose idea it was, but I know they're always chasing funds. Um, and just going back to what you said before about the gun laws, I mean, I guess someone would to play a bit of devil's advocate. They would say there's been no gun massacres in Australia since those laws were enacted after the Port Arthur massacre by John mm -hmm. Howard. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that is that hard evidence to deal with when you're saying you should be? weakening the laws here? Well, you know, that's not really right. You know, they changed the criteria. Uh, there's been more gun crime since uh, since then than there ever was. So uh, for people to say, you know, they, that there hasn't been any gun crime every day in Sydney and Melbourne, there's a shooting um, pretty much every day. What so, would be your perfect solution to gun crime? Uh, <coughs> well, it'd be nice to have no criminals, but the problem is that all the criminals have guns. And by disarming the uh, population doesn't really uh, make you any safer. We've now got bloody Sudanese and people kicking people's doors in, in, in Melbourne and Sydney and they've got no way to defend themselves and uh, you know, I think it's everyone's right to be able to defend themselves and their family. So, What lessons have you learnt from the New South Wales state election? Oh, um, that the two pa uh, major parties are on the nose a bit. Uh, people have had enough of uh, being told what to do and not having a say in what happens in this country. So um, you know, I brought a bill into Parliament a few months ago to give the Australian people a say in who comes to this country. Uh, for 45 years they've never had a say. So I think it's high time the Australian people got a vote on whether they want to be uh, bringing more and more of these uh, uh, people into the country who attack us on a daily basis. You mean Muslims? Muslims and Sudanese, yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess in, in light of that, if you were to make that law, would that law be retrospective? Would you be also looking to send people back who are Muslim who have previously arrived here or previously immigrated here? Anyone who, uh, anyone who commits a crime in this place that's a, a guest of the Australian people who are living off our uh, welfare and you commit a crime, they should all go home and with their family, you know, because their family is obviously not controlling them. What about if they haven't committed a crime? Uh, if they haven't committed a crime, I don't see uh, that we need to have any people in this country that uh, don't uh, integrate and unfortunately the Muslims to a large extent don't. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I've, I've yet to see a country where we've had Muslim immigration and we've had, had peace, you know, they, they attack us and uh, eventually, like Great Britain and like France and like Germany and particularly Sweden, Sweden's a basket case now because of their uh, indiscriminate immigration policy. It, you know, it was, it's been a disaster, it's the rape capital of the world now. Uh, I don't think Australians want to live like that. So would you like to see Australia just tell every Muslim immigrant that's come here in the past to, to go home essentially? Me personally, yes.